gonna tell you about Tanya. Uh, from birth, I always felt that she was very special. We were just like sisters, I'm serious. And uh, we'd get in a go-kart and we'd go around like a bunch of kids and we'd have ourselves a ball and go play games. We was just so much, uh, so much alike. And like I said, her loving me made me happy. And we got to Greenville Memorial Hospital. And Mm. That's when the doctor came out and uh, told us that Tonya had an aneurysm. We stayed with her for several hours and she was just lying there. She was just lying there and those machines was all over and she was just lying there. And then they came back to the room and they said that uh, they didn't see no life form. I didn't know much about that, <clears throat> but I told him, I said, you know, I said, uh, we'll go and we'll pray about it. We'll pray about this. So we went back and, and, we, and we told the doctor we would come, she, she, we would donate her organs. Her heart, Lord have mercy. I said, I would donate her heart because she was such a giving person and she would give any child anything. She would give me anything. She would give anybody. And to know that her life had to be cut short at the age of 27, I said yes. After leaving the hospital, they gave us the bag that they put her stuff in. I sit down after, after days of just wondering. Something took me and I, I, I opened up that bag. So I was taking out her cards and taking out this and taking out that and taking out that and took out all of her belongings out of that thing. And, and I, I, I was just not satisfied. And then when I picked up her driving license, I, I, I just picked them up. Then I looked, I <laughs> flipped them over, and on the back of that license, she had wanted to become an organ donor. And boy, when I found that, Man, I called my daughter Bridget. I said, Bridget, we made the right decision. <laughs> Out of all of that hurt and all of that pain and all that grief, God, that, that's, that's the one thing that keeps me going every day. That uh, Even when I drop to the Lord's, I, I said, Lord, left me here just to make sure that Tonya Bush and Will got taken care of. To me, it, it adds a little bit to the person that's left behind not to hold on to, but to go on. And I thank God for the person that received them and their life has continued and their life is going on. I, I, I don't feel such a great loss. I mean, I don't have her, but I have so much to hold on to. There's nothing else you can do with the organs. Don't take them to the grave. Leave them. Somebody's crying, somebody's begging, somebody's in pain and somebody's in need. They need the organs. Justin was diagnosed at three months old throughout his life. You know, he never let the disease keep him down. He, uh, he went at life wide open with, with no reservations. Uh, he played soccer, he hunted, he fished, he played golf, he played uh, trumpet in the, both the middle and high school bands all the way through. In fact, had a solo part in the halftime show at his high school. He dearly, dearly loved deer hunting. That, that was his life and that was his escape from the reality of his disease and, and the things he had to tolerate uh, with treatments and so forth. 
when he was out in the woods, sitting in a tree, uh, nothing else mattered. Hang on a minute. He was on the lung transplant list for two years prior to his death. And unfortunately, the uh, lungs didn't come in time. And uh, so his lungs just kind of kind of gave out. The first thought, I, I guess, was that as parents, we had, we had devoted 110% to Justin's care and, and to Justin's life for 23 years. We had gotten him on the transplant list as that one, one last effort. Uh, and that, and, and when they didn't come and, and Justin passed away, uh, you, you just have to face reality. Uh, there, there were not enough donors out there to supply the organs that were needed to save Justin's life as well as thousands and thousands of other lives, you know, across the country. If it were your family member or your friend that needed a heart, a lung, a liver, kidney or any of the other many tissues that can be transplanted wouldn't you want to help them if you if you were getting ready to pass away wouldn't you want to know that you're going to help these these friends and family and strangers She was born with a heart defect that was undiagnosed throughout the pregnancy. And we found out when we were leaving the hospital that she was born with hypoplastic left heart, which is really the rarest congenital heart defect a baby can have. She was really, really sick. We rushed her to the hospital at 3 a.m. and they worked on her until 11 o'clock the next morning just to get her stabilized enough to um, get to MUSC and try to figure out what had just happened. She finally had to go on a life support system, ECMO, that was basically her heart and lungs for 22 days. She ended up on the transplant list the day before Christmas Eve. and. Um, that was very unexpected. I was still hopeful that the other heart would kind of work again. I, I didn't know how it could, but it's scary when you think your life's, your daughter's life's in someone else's hands. You're waiting for somebody to, I guess, have to go through the most horrible day that they will ever have to go through and then make the hardest decision that they have to make. the transplant. Um, the first few months were hard because her organs had taken such a hit. Um, it was a great match and her heart is the most wonderful thing in her body, I think. It, it's the most healthy thing. Um, it was a hard first probably six months, but um, she's good. She's great, actually. And it's just amazing to see what a child with half of a heart, I guess, can do with a whole one. She's kind of going through her terrible twos at three now, I think. She's very saucy. Um, yeah, she's, 
She likes to do everything her big brother does, and they're kind of partners in crime, I guess. He loves to aggravate her just because she knows he knows that he can get her attention, and then they usually end up giggling on the floor, laughing, playing. They're very happy together. They're close. I think he, it's, he likes to protect her. I think his life's going to be changed because of what she's gone through. He's going to see, see the world differently. I've written in letters that I just am so thankful about their decision, how totally heartfelt I feel for their family, and I tell them how their son lives on through my daughter. I tell them the things that she does now and that she wouldn't be here to be able to do. I tell them I think about their son and his passing every day, and I just pray for them and hope that they can find peace with it. And I just thank them. I thank, thank, thank them every day for that decision. I just want everybody to know how great organ donation is. It saves lives, creates lives, really.